With a promo like that, you'd think it would be the latest Hollywood blockbuster, and maybe it will be. But right now, it's a new book from author Andrew Harris, who's here to tell us more about his gripping story. Welcome, Andrew. Welcome to the cafe. It's so good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this is it, a litany of good intentions, and that is actually the second part of your trilogy, it's isn't it? It's the second in the Human Spirit Trilogy. Nice. Yeah. yeah it's and where does this one start from? This one starts a year after, for the uh, people who've read the first book, which is the the sea clef for those of you nice. who read the first book yep. yeah uh, the second book starts a year later uh, the two main characters hannah and lawrence have been together and the adventure starts when they take a long weekend in india brilliant and what made you want to write about i mean this this is all about dealing with poverty and the fact that actually there is a way to get rid of poverty mm. across the world what made you come up with absolutely. that absolutely well i went to i actually went to mumbai uh, 4 years ago uh, and what hit me was they said there were five million people living in the slums of Mumbai, which is bigger than the population yeah. of New Zealand, yeah. with no health care, no access to toilets, electricity, anything at all. And I thought, even in this day and age, uh, the, 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 the poverty around the world uh, and the con consequences of poverty, the, the slavery that comes out of it, there's 46 million people enslaved, there's, there's uh, human trafficking and the rest of it, yep. uh, all stems from the fact of poverty. And even now, we're not resolving the problem. No, OK, so why did you decide to sort of set, like, a crime thriller scene? Yeah, well, crime, crime fiction is my genre. Right. It's action-packed, it's page-turning, it takes hold of you from the first page, and you can't put it down. Um, and the, the people I love, the John le Carres, the yep. Dan Browns, the Joe Nesbos, this is my, my history, my story. Uh, and I wanted to write a book that just took hold of people and didn't let them go. And talking about history, there's a lot of history in there and there's a lot of scientific history. You've got um, Einstein in there and his, and his family coming through the generations. Are you a scientist? No, I'm not a scientist. And all this information is accessible by research. Right. Really, the best part of writing this book has been doing the research. I mean, did you know that Einstein had an illegitimate child? No, did not until I read yeah, your book. Oh, that's right, yeah. And did you know that maybe some of the theories that he came out with really weren't his own? They uh, were his and, wife's. Well, his wife, yeah. yeah. His wife was a genius. She went to a boys' school because they didn't allow girls in girls' schools. Yeah. And if you look at the way women have been treated in science, I think when I did the research, there were 199 winners of the Physics Laureate, of which two are a female. Yeah. And this isn't, you know, there hasn't been a female winner for over 60 years. This wow. isn't right. This just isn't right. OK, well, given all that, I'm quite fascinated. Does the story change, even though in your head you know where you're going? Mm. Based on that research and what you discovered, does mm. it sometimes change? Well, interestingly, you mentioned that, uh, and I know I probably shouldn't admit to this, but one of the characters, um, Hannah, in the book, yep. actually came to me in my dream. Ah. Actually came to me in the dream, and she said, Andrew, um, the story's going away from me. I haven't been involved for so many chapters. <laughs> and she actually gave me an idea to how she could weave her way back into the story. Oh, I and I woke that. up the next morning and said, Hannah, that's brilliant. Well, you can guess that my wife wasn't entirely, <laughs> wasn't entirely happy with them. Who's Hannah? Well, it's the character in the book. She's talking to me in my sleep. Of course she yeah, is. Yeah, it took yeah. a bit of explaining that. Yeah, oh, that's great. Right. I yeah. want to ask because um, the, I'm a bit of a conspiracy theorist, right? And there's mm. a bit of conspiracy in here mm. in that there's an overarching sort of bad... Um, I, I guess institution mm. that's trying to stop poverty actually being solved because poverty is money, is business. It's big business. So it's are big you a business. conspiracy theorist? I am as a well? secret conspiracy yeah. theorist. Yeah, there was conspiracy theory in the in the sea cleft, which is about cancer research. You know, 22 people die every day of cancer in New Zealand, and we don't seem to do very much about it. Mm. Uh, it's a conspiracy in poverty. There's uh, there's millions of people involved in human trafficking, and we turn a blind eye. 
um, there is organised crime here. Yeah. And in this day and age, it needs to be laundered through banks, it needs to be controlled around the world, and, and these guys are, are evil. And so they don't want poverty to end. To end. They, no. they want to see it continue. You've yeah, well, weaved a whole lot I of know. stuff together. Oh, honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is a really good you read. Loved Thank it, you didn't so you? much, Andrew. Yeah, I really did. And if you want a great read, a litany of good intentions is available now on Amazon. Thank you so much.